If you've done any research on modafinil, you've probably heard that it's likened to the pill that Bradley Cooper takes in the movie Limitless. I was blind, but now I see. It also seems to be generally regarded as safe and non-addicting. However, you can't get it in the US unless you are experiencing conditions related to narcolepsy, shift work sleep disorder, or obstructive sleep apnea, and you have a prescription from your doctor. And even if you do have a prescription, the price for perhaps the most well-documented brand name pharmacy available version of it will cost you around $1,500 for a one month supply. Now I have heard that some people will go as far as to order it online from much cheaper sources and still get the same quality apparently, but this is risky because it's still illegal to use it in the US without a prescription and it's possible that you may not actually be getting what you think you are. Well, recently I traveled for about two months in Mexico where you can actually buy Modafinilo, as it's called in Spanish, over the counter. While I was there, I tried three different brands, Modiodal, Aditrol, and Cidilo. The largest boxes came with 28 tablets, each at 200 milligrams, and the cost was approximately 60 US dollars. So way cheaper than what you can find it for here in the US, and it's available in pretty much every major pharmacy chain. For me personally, I do struggle a lot in my life with energy and focus. Even if I do get a full night's sleep, I often feel tired or at least not very fresh throughout the day. I'm sure we've all had mornings where we wake up and for whatever reason, we just feel on top of the world, super energized and ready to get the day started. For me, that is a very rare occurrence and it's much more likely that I'll feel much slower than I'd like to and rely heavily on caffeine to keep going. And this is despite learning a lot about sleep and trying different ways to improve it. Now, as far as focus goes, it can be really difficult for me sometimes to stay on one task, particularly without starting to feel anxious and wanting to take long breaks. And so these two things combined have really been issues for me and my quality of life. So how was my experience taking modafinil over the course of two months? Well, I categorized my usage mainly in two different ways. Taking it when I didn't get a lot of sleep the night before and when the following day would normally feel very sluggish as a result. And then taking it after being well rested to see its performance enhancing effects. On top of that, I also experimented with 200 milligrams, which is a single pill. 300 milligrams, taking a pill and a half, and 400 milligrams, which is taking two pills, both on an empty stomach versus with a meal, as well as during slightly different parts of the day. For me, I saw a huge benefit when taking modafinil shortly after waking up when I wasn't able to get a lot of sleep the night before. Typically, if I get less than about six and a half hours of sleep at night, I'll start getting very sluggish early in the afternoon the next day, and I either need to take a nap or risk going throughout the rest of the day, being very unproductive, kind of lazy, and even more unfocused. Taking even the 200 milligram dose of modafinil noticeably allowed me to feel alert and awake throughout the day. Now, especially at that lower dose, it wouldn't feel like a noticeable jolt of energy. It was more of a clean burn throughout the day that just kind of helped me feel more normal. I would reflect on how I was feeling midday and think to myself, you know, I should be feeling really slow by now, but instead I feel surprisingly fine. It was nothing crazy, it just kept me at a good level. In fact, this clean feeling was one of the big takeaways from the experience because it made me more aware of the contrasting effect that coffee gives me. Like so many other people, I rely heavily on caffeine in the forms of one or two cups of coffee per day. It's become so normal that I didn't even realize that it actually has this additional effect of making my body feel more anxious and tight. Kind of like there's this tense underlying energy beneath it. Taking modafinil, however, getting an even better sense of wakefulness and then realizing that it wasn't accompanied by that same tense feeling really opened my eyes to the idea that caffeine from coffee might actually not be worth it anymore. Now, I do know that some medications can be dangerous to take over time on an empty stomach. So I did look online to see if it was safe to do so with modafinil. Apparently it is generally safe. And so I experimented with taking it on an empty stomach and with a meal. But for me, I didn't really feel that it mattered too much. I also did a bit of searching to find out how long it takes before the effect kicks in, how long the majority of the effect lasts and how long the actual substance stays in your system. On an empty stomach, it took about 15 minutes before I noticed a change, and maybe up to 30 to 40 minutes if I had food in my stomach. How long the effect lasted would depend on how awake I already felt. In the case of taking it when I got less than optimal sleep, there were occasions when I would start to feel that lack of sleep creep up on me, 
around two in the afternoon. And I would be tempted to make a cup of coffee if I couldn't take a nap. Now to me, this was a little bit surprising because I thought of modafinil in the same vein as something like Adderall in which I would hear stories of people taking that in order to be hyper-focused and hyper-awake for extremely long periods of time. And so I was ready for modafinil to make me feel super wired for the entire day, no matter how much sleep I got. But that wasn't the case, which is probably a good thing. Still, I read that the half-life of modafinil is about 12 to 15 hours, which means that even if you don't feel the effect, you still have 50% of the substance left in your system after that amount of time. So most days, I would take it around nine in the morning and the latest that I would take it would be around noontime, which I even felt was kind of pushing it because that would mean that by around midnight, I'd still have about half of it left in my system and probably some residual left over the next morning. Now, if I took it after being well rested, I would generally feel alert and awake for the entire day but it would also be more important for me to really try to wind down at night with things like warmer lights, less screen time on my phone, and just being in a calmer environment before going to sleep. Otherwise, I could easily end up staying awake until the early morning hours. Now, this brings up something that is common with more potent substances, and that is that it's imperative that you have an awareness of timing. Otherwise, you never give your body a chance to completely expel it before you redose and you can really throw off your body's sleep-wake cycles. Now, as far as dosage goes, the standard dose is 200 milligrams, but from what I read, taking up to 400 milligrams is still generally considered safe. When I would take 200 milligrams, I did experience that clean burn of energy that I mentioned earlier, but overall, the effect would be pretty light and hard to notice, unless I really stopped to think about it. Again, my expectations were that it would be very noticeable in terms of a change in energy and focus, and so 200 milligrams in that sense kind of felt like a letdown. Now, when I doubled it and took 400 milligrams, I definitely experienced a much more noticeable effect. I felt a lot more wired, but I also felt a more noticeable underlying tension. Not quite the same as I do with coffee, but it would just be this kind of weird state where I would be writing something for work and I would kind of have the sense that I should be taking a break. I should get up and get some water or go out for a walk. But another part of my mind just wanted to stay in my seat and continue pushing through my work until it was finished. Now, I guess that's the effect that most people generally describe when talking about something like Adderall. And so perhaps that's the effect that I thought that I wanted but it was kind of uncomfortable. And I just got this sense that doing that would be unsustainable. And if I did it too often, it would somehow lead to bad things. So for me, I found that 300 milligrams was kind of the sweet spot where I would be much more alert and awake, but I didn't get that same underlying tension in my body. Fortunately, the pills were scored down the middle so you could easily take one and a half. Also, I should mention that I didn't really notice a difference between the three different brands that I took. So here are some precautions that I have. I mentioned earlier that sometimes the effect would diminish even though I still had a lot of hours left in the day and a lot of work left to do. Sometimes I would take a nap, which I think is generally the best idea, but if that was not possible, I would make a cup of coffee instead. But I felt that having modafinil in my system and adding caffeine to the mix, even though I was feeling tired and wanted that extra pick-me-up, left me more prone to feeling minor headaches and just kind of having this uneasy feeling. I also noticed, and this is a really important one, I think, that no matter what time I took modafinil in the morning, drinking alcohol during the same day, even if it was later at night, would also lead to noticeable headaches. Now, generally speaking, this makes sense because as enjoyable as alcohol can be, it really is terrible for your body. And mixing it with pretty much anything, even things like sugar, is extra taxing on you physically. So the headaches that I received when I would have a beer or two at night after taking modafinil in the morning were kind of like a warning sign for my body that it wasn't a good idea to drink on the same day as taking modafinil. And so because of this, I would try to be more strategic and only take modafinil on weekdays or days when I knew I wouldn't be going out or having a drink at home. Okay, so here's my verdict. Overall, modafinil was very helpful and I would like to continue taking it if it was possible. Now, from what I've heard, I may actually be able to qualify for a prescription based on a number of different factors, but it's also super expensive, which makes using it a lot less feasible. And even though it was useful, I'm not sure that it's worth going out of my way to pay those crazy high prices 
or search through sketchy suppliers on the internet. Also, unless I miss something, modafinil definitely seems to be super overhyped. To compare it to the Limitless pill in the movie, is so over exaggerated. Now I've experienced substances that can dramatically change your perception of the world around you, saturate colors, widen your visual field, change your perception of sound, and all of those other interesting things that are portrayed in the movie. And modafinil definitely was not any of that. It didn't turn me into some hyper productivity machine. It didn't instantly make life better. I wasn't constantly happier, more positive, and more creative. Maybe there were touches of those things, but again, the effects, at least in my opinion, seem to be exaggerated.